find her and erase whatever fucked up delusions you the problem is they are not delusions what are you gonna do about that Hello there, great person, and welcome back to Let's Watch Our King. This time we're at episode 6 of season 1. And as you have uh, probably seen before, I absolutely enjoy the show. I love that I don't know what's going to happen. So I will still try to guess what's going to happen, and you will laugh at me, but I will not uh, try that hard anymore because it's just so well written that I, I just... The, the writers do have more in mind than the typical tropes and I love this show for it already and uh, we'll just get uh, we'll just <laughs> we're just gonna get into it be surprised enjoy the characters enjoy the spectacle and um, it's all, like I did uh, recently uh, rank it a five out of five already so I hope it doesn't disappoint in the last episodes if something should happen that I really dislike I will tell you I will not uh, Mince words, I can be very um, yeah, emotional about things I don't like, but currently this is one of the best written things I've ever seen, which is like, I love that. I, that has uh, happened several times now on this channel where I just saw new stuff and it was like so good. So thanks, uh, thanks to all of you for recommending stuff like this and uh, I've rambled enough. Let's just get into the episode. Here we go, episode six, and don't forget to like and subscribe if you like this and comment on what you thought to help the algorithm and uh, me by that uh, whatever <laughs> anyway let's go doch ich frag ich frag mich wer wir sind So we do have the episode called Who is Powder? And uh, if you're a Dark fan, you know the question is Where is Powder? But yeah, I'm just joking. Let's just fucking go. I can't wait. Oh, that startled me. Okay. We did this when I was young, jumping into the channel, trying not to hit a bike buried on the ground that we didn't see. That happened once. Ooh, Victor's past. Ooh, Victor's past. I love Victor. I'm so intrigued by him. Kind-hearted soul, possibly gonna be corrupted by the cruelest fate you can have. A deadly disease. What else is there to love? Oh, he built steamboats when he was a child. I mean, not steamboats, gearboats, but... He was still... Man, he already used a stick, man. You know... Victor is such an intriguing, complex character. And you know who he reminds me of? He reminds me... Of... For once, Stephen Hawking, of course. I mean, obviously that comes to mind with his uh, disease that's crippling him more and more in his life that's making his body give away um and also someone else and i'm not gonna talk about that because it's pretty personal currently but um you know it's just a scientist wanting to see the world make it a better place having fun with building things improving things the person basically you would you would want to choose if you had to choose someone to supervise technology because he would be someone who probably would decide ethically correctly. And I know that's a vague thing. I, I do know that. Like, don't get me wrong, but he's a good bet. Let's, let's put it like that. I mean, I'm a physicist. I operate with um, probabilities, especially as a quantum physicist. But, like, uh, he's the best bet. He's one of the best, bestest bets, whatever you say. Uh, for 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 monitoring science and stuff, and he seems to have a really really kind heart, and I'm very very afraid that that he will fall into some really really deep shit because of 
a way out of this disease, which I would love. I hope that happens, and I know it probably wouldn't, because, you know, I can't predict anything in this show. But the only thing that is interesting is the first time he was introduced, and I hope I don't misremember, he was a bit condescending to Jace, because he wasn't, like, something upper. Anyway, I rambled enough. I wonder what disease he has. Man, look at him. All that joy. You know what, Rings of Power? Fuck you, this is what you should have done with the fucking paper boat, you shits. Sorry, I love a lot of the rings. Real lot of the rings. Goes into the cave of unknown. Caves and the ocean are very... I know I've talked about the ocean before. It is a symbol for potential and looming danger. Like the unknown that could be good or bad. And here it's double that. Like it's a boat venturing into into an unknown lake be in a, in, a, in a cave with crystals that might give some light, but it's dark and I don't know what the fuck's going on. Perhaps I'm really wrong, I'm sorry, but it's just like associations I get with this. Oh, he went there, that was quick, okay, I, yeah. There's a, there's a, oh! There's a, there's a Komodo Warren or whatever it's called in English. You built this? Ooh, a sage in a cave. Awesome, man. Playing with the others. Is that Silco? Oh, is that Silco? Silco before he falls to whatever drives him with the fight with Wenda. I am sorry I'm very bad with voices. I can discern Japanese voice actors pretty well. And if the actor in English, like the English actress, known very well that voice is a character, I can pick it out as well. But I think that's Silco. I'm very bad at faces, though. I'm sorry. A <laughs> monster. So it's not a... Yeah, it's, I do think it's Silco. What is it? Oh, Jesus fucking Christ, are we going to go there? Are we going to go to science philosophy more? Okay. Okay, let's go. Loneliness is often a byproduct of a, what did you say, creative mind? Let's just say creative mind. It doesn't really matter what he says because, like, the underlying theme is important, I think. I, you know, I do know some of the world's leading physicists. And it's not necessarily the ones that are in media everywhere that get all the fame and stuff. I, I know the people that know stuff, like that calculate stuff that is beyond imagination. And if you talk to them, you're like, what the fuck are you on about? And and you just just see the shimmer of genius under the ocean. Like you don't know what they're talking about, but but you know enough of what they're talking about. You know that it's genius. You know that. I, I don't know if you have ever encountered that. It, if you talk to them, it's it's so interesting, but they are lonely. They're not lonely because there are not people supporting them. They're not lonely because people don't cheer for them, don't want them to succeed, but they're lonely because they feel alone in the mode of thinking. And I've, like, I know people like that. I, I know some of the top scientists, at least in quantum theory. And it's, it's hard for them in a way because... Whatever they think, whatever they imagine, whatever they conceive, people, most people are too slow to follow, too slow to be on the same ride as them through the oceans of unknown. Let's, let's take that funny metaphor. I know you think it's cheesy, probably, but I really, really think that's a true statement. And again, I have to commend the writer of this episode, uh, these episodes, because it's very, very on point. Like, it's very strong deep themes condensed in sentences which is for a show that's treasure is it real? i is don't it know what real dish? means mm, biologist so are you i got a mushroom feeding the monster getting to know the unknown is a scientist a bit i know you probably think i'm stupid and Weird, but I, you know this is basically science. 
the monsters, the thing you don't understand, the the experimental results you grapple with and you try to like get close to it with some small approximations in mathematics and you'd like try to somehow be friends with it and it fucks you over because you have no fucking clue and the world is complex. I love it. <laughs> I love it. She's dying. Oh no. Mutation must. Survive. Ideas dying, perhaps. I know that's just too superficial, probably. We can be loners together. Hmm, so he is a scientist as well. Probably Silico. I am very sorry I'm bad with faces. It's probably Silico. I just, you know, it's. Oh, enough. Hi, my dinger and him. Hmm. Yesterday I stumbled upon an aspiring young Really? Ruminating in his steel oasis. Ooh. Man, I do think Victor is my favorite character now. I know those scenes seemed weird, um, surface level a bit perhaps, but for me that was really meaningful. Because he found him in the, in the gutter and Victor was a... Uh, one of those people from the slums, from the peasants that you think are worthless. And someone was like, man, there's a spark in you. Let's try to see what that is. And like, I don't know, I, perhaps it's be because I'm also from, like, I'm from a farming village. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm basically from the, not from the slums, like it was more than that. But I don't know, I connect with these characters because like, like my my parents weren't big academics or or thinkers though they were clever like or are clever my parents are very clever they are very great people and i love them but you know it's like these societal structures where they like they're not the, the societal structure that would have um given me an advantage in my education stuff so they tried their best to like remedy that or whatever you say or like they like equalize that or whatever you know what i mean and it worked i guess but it's like Hammerdinger is he seems to be a very kind soul that is just out for if there's talent let's let's cultivate it if you're from the slums I don't give a shit and that's how it should be and it's hard to be like that because of two reasons first no of one reason of, of the structures that are already in place because you can have your perfect system uh, and you, whatever political system it is, it doesn't even matter. There is a political system that has, has a solidified structure. Any political system, you can take any one. So I won't name any any particular one. I mean, the, the, the prevailing one is capitalism, but I like it could be communism as well. It didn't, doesn't matter. The, the thing about political systems, I think, stupid opinion. Stupid opinion. But my, my humble stupid opinion is there are structures that get solidified in a system and if you are part of that structure or uh, accidentally fortunately connected to it you will get more opportunities you know and people who try to transcend the structure are valuable because that is what really makes your structure grow and they're necessary and yeah i think heimerdinger is one of those i should really play league of legends again and play some heimerdinger stuff I remember playing him with the turrets and like I don't remember much but it was a good thing in covert times where I like played like some Carol League of Legends against AIs and I picked Timer Dinger. I picked the, the, the Void dude as well. Like that shoots lasers and, and like has a has a flag cannon <laughs> across the map, but let's just watch. I know you don't want to know. <laughs> uh yeah, he's gonna die of of his disease. Do you contemplate death, Professor? Oh, fuck you, not there. Don't go there. I suppose you're like a... Fuck, man, yeah. Man. <laughs> Fred, man, yeah. Yeah. What haven't you to show for your remarkable life? Fuck, man. You should be proud of what you've accomplished. <laughs> oh shit, man. Figments. 
even in your memory. Shit, man. Had truth that those who shine brightest often burn. So true, though. I'm very sorry. It's it's. I will tell you one day. I will tell you one day. Fastest. It's so true, though. Ah, fuck! I'm so sorry. Yeah, it's, it's the truth, you know. The thing is, you know, you can be so bright and so kind and you just fucking die because of shit. And you're young. And you should do more. And you have good ideas that might change the world, you just fucking die because of shit. Because of some fucked up disease that kills you. Well, that's the truth of the world. It happens because the world isn't fair. It just isn't fair. Anyway. Uh, whatever. Ooh, I'm, I'm sorry that it hit a point. I'm sorry. Yeah, intro or whatever. <laughs> Some... Some cooking you have there. No, okay, it's drawing. And it's her. Are you still mad that... Whatever. He got away from you because his friend did die. Listen, I'm sorry for disappearing last night. So I really hope that it's like it was before in this show that people are realistic. So he will just tell her like, yeah, my best friend's fucking dying of leukemia or whatever the fuck he has. Duty calls. Tell her, fuck man, tell her that your friend is dying. Victor's dying. Yeah, thank fuck man, fuck man, this show, I love it. That's what you should do, fuck man, yeah. You know, in every other fucking shit show, he would have been like, yeah, I'm so sorry, he would have danced around her, but he fucking tells her because that's what you should do, man. Tell your feelings about this shitty fuck disease shit. See, and she immediately is like, yeah, wow, I was such a, like, I didn't know. Improving lives, solving real issues, not just... Man, that's yeah, so, so, so sad, man. I hate feeling so useless. No. Man, it's like... You know, I, I really love this because this is really real unfortunately real, really realistic and you like you do feel useless like you can be as brilliant as you fucking want but if something comes for your best friend fucking kills him slowly with the most agonizing pain you can ever imagine like you think like what the fuck is this what am i supposed to do you're like yeah i should have gone into medicine should have gone into fucking research of medicine to fucking do this to 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 prevent shit like this well you can't can't you know, I love her as well. Like, her character... I, I, I have to be honest, I thought she would be... And she might be down the line, because these people are... De um, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, 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 depicted as really real people. So, she might have some darkness in her, and she has, because everyone has, but... She immediately was like, you know, I was mad and petty, and I was like, you fucking left me when we had our first time, and she realized... Man, yeah, of course you fucking left. I would have left too. And I love that. Like, her character just threw a thousand times on me. Like, holy fuck, what an awesome character they are. Like, she is and he is. Yeah. You just need someone. Yeah. She's your fucking friend. Man. I'm in exile from my family. Oh, really? You are? I don't believe that for a second. Is Medata a country? A province? A county? I don't know. 
I guess she's like I guess she's from a county called Medada. We can't change what fate has in store. Yeah, that is true. But what if you can't be with him? What did she paint though? Setting out into the sea of unknown. You know, in a way, I think that's what death is as well. Wouldn't it be great if it goes on, like, not live, but <laughs> different stuff? You know, I'm writing a book about that currently. It's almost finished. You will see it in, like, one year. But, and I do think it's the best thing I've ever written. It's probably one of the best things you will ever read if you read it. And I don't say that lightly because I have uh, very low self-esteem, but... Anyway, I, I do think taking the ship into the unknown. I mean, it's what Lord of the Rings also does with the Grey Havens. That's exactly it. Like death. You would venture, hopefully, into the light. It's all we can hope for. Man, this episode is already my favorite, and it's not even like 10 minutes in. Also, what the fuck is going on with Victor? He's got some weird magic bullshit going on that's gonna fucking fuck him over. I hope not. But what would you do if you could escape death? And it does have his blood. Oh no, he touched it. Oh god. Oh. Of course they cut away. I mean, it's magic perhaps it can heal him. That would be lovely. But will it save him is the question. Jack. Ooh, Jinx went to him. Nice try, Chuck. <laughs> was Chuck the You know I'm bad with names. Was Chuck the friend of Vender? Or was it another barkeeper? It doesn't really matter for what I think currently about this. Um She's still, as I said, she's like her child personality. Like, she regressed. And she tries to make the world fit to what she thought saw it as a child. So the bartender was Chuck as a child. So, yeah. I mean, it's logical. Who is he, though? I don't think we know him. Just grab someone up. Someone? Anyone? She still has that orb. I mean, I mean I'm not grabbing girls. <laughs> Other than <that. laughs> Oh, God. Like a saying. You're doing great, Chuck. I also like the Jinx is using really fucking <laughs> mean psychological manipulation of being like, yeah, you know what? I'm currently hitting on you. That's what I feel. Might be wrong. If I if it's wrong, shout at me in the comments. But it's like, yeah, oh, I'm such a cute girl. Just tell me stuff. Ooh. And I mean, of course, they're both working so cynical. So it, there is a, a sense of uh, a common goal and it's even more logical. But yeah, so she now knows about Vi and uh, Kate. Here, Interesting. Is she gonna like, is there a bomb? in? yeah, I knew that. Okay, it didn't kill him, though. I, I was about to say she would kill him. No, she didn't. Kind of jinx. Oh right, he was fucking stabbed. We have to keep moving. I can't believe how much I love this show. I also ship these two <laughs> anyway. Can you do this? Oh yeah, she just pickles down there. Uh guard with a wound in her fucking liver or whatever there is. I'm sorry I'm not a medicine guy. My my my, my PhD is not in medicine. It's an eye, though. Isn't it important? Eye is the symbol for enlightenment, truth, seeing, for the predator that charges at its prey. Let's see if some of that fits. Oh, it's the, the Ding Dongs that try to get them in episode uh, 4. The ones with the surfboards. Fire some things. Oh, oh, nice, Jinx. Oh, God. I'm scared of Jinx, but she's an awesome character, man. Such a tragic character. Where's Silco, though? Did she off him? Imprison him? 
Ouch. I feel like you and I got off on the wrong arm. <laughs> the wrong arm, that's awesome. No need. It's your sister. Oh, she's gonna have some fucking episodes here. Uh... Oh no, she really pushed her buttons. She replaced you. She now is a better sister than you, and she's like gonna go fucking away. I love it. You implode, and Silco finally gets. Yeah, this too, though. Cause as you were for your family. Oh, holy shit, man! Awesome. She's gonna fucking do a number on you. I hope. Like, yeah. Oh, it's Marx's daughter, or is it Potter? No, it's Marx's daughter, I think. Yeah. I really wonder what he's about. I know he's corrupt as fuck now, but his daughter seems to be his anchor in morality a bit. Always give your villain at least something good, whatever it is, and a child is something easy to put in. Oh, fuck, man. No, oh, Jesus fuck. So busy. Little Ren here saw me in. Jesus fuck you, Silico. I love Silico so much. Who the fuck is that? He looks like the ears guy in Vinland Saga. You remember our old friend Vi, don't you? Oh my fucking god. Your age. Her father went on a long <laughs> she told me that she left with him. <laughs> that is so mean that she's using her to whatever. You know what is happening. I don't need to spill it. Isn't that sad? Yeah, she never died. <laughs> being separated from your father. Yeah, not being dead. Just like them, she does whatever she wants. I can't control her. Yeah, you can't control Kate. What are you gonna do now? Yeah. Everyone makes mistakes, right? That is true, though. And a good bad guy. Yeah. My that is the thing, though. A good bad guy will be like, yeah, you fucked up. That can happen. Fix it. And it's okay. Because no one is perfect. And even if you're a big bad overlord who wants, like, complete loyalty and everything from his servants, you have to be aware of... The oh, God. I promise I'm not, I'm not an evil overlord. But what you, what you need to do is definitely be like, allow mistakes, just make them fix it. Because you have people under you working and working conditions are like, or whatever, philosophies or whatever the fuck you say, uh, is the same for everyone. So if you work on an asshole boss, you will not do your job correctly. So if you're like, hey, you fucked up, I will support you and let you make it right. It's good, bad boss, like evil boss. If you're an evil maniac, a maniac do that. What an asshole. Oops. Oh, so sorry. Accidents happen. <laughs> oh, I love that. It's such an asshole move. Oh, I love these thin, like thinly veiled threats or whatever it's called. So, Victor, what are you going to do? It responds to organic matter. Makes it grow like cancer, though. The key to augmenting physiology, extending life. <sighs> Fuck, man, yeah. Yeah, extending life, wouldn't that be nice? But you know what the thing is? And I have talked about it a little in episode, I do think, two or three. Magic is basically an abstract version of realizing realizing ideas and some you can re realize through technology then it's science and some you can't yet perhaps then it's magic like extending life forever for us that's magic it could be science one day um creating portals to other dimensions for us it's magic it could be science one day you know it's like the dude said that i always forget and everyone always Tells me in the comments, but I think it was it's whatever. Rejecting the transmutation. Okay, so it's just temporary, and he needs to fix it to survive. Yeah. Good old, good old Mr. Freezer, whatever. 
I can feel my body. Uh, how sad would that be? No, he's a technician, not a biologist. Topsiders don't want to think about wind up. Oh, so are those people with diseases or what are they? There. So this is the rubbish place for or what the trash place for people you don't like, like upstairs. I do think she always sees Powder's shadow though, it's so sad. Why won't you let Kate care for you? Yeah. Always find a way to screw us. I suppose top side is to blame. Um, you know, I, I I really get them both though. I mean, Kate is a is a rare ex exemption of the top siders because she actually cares for what's going on on the. On the level, like the lower levels of the real world, so to speak. She cares what's going on in the slums, why people are suffering. She wants to understand the world and its complexity and its completeness. A uh, compl sorry, completeness and a bias like all my life, top setters have stood up above us, tried to push us down, hold us down. You were cozy, you were developed, you had money, you had fame, riches, comfort. Fuck you. And I really love that, but. They did help each other last time. They want the same thing. And sometimes it can build bridges, I think. And there she sees her. Little child. You don't know anything about me. And that again. We're just people just like you. It's all the time. I do think the biggest mis misconception, if you want to call it that, in you might call it differently, of course, but is that... People in certain roles you see that you hate or you love, that they are not like you. And everyone's like you, in a way. Everyone is. If you meet your stars, they're like you. If you meet people from history, or if you would meet people from history you absolutely hate and despise because they're shits, they're more like you than you would ever think. And I don't know why we built these... I don't know, spaces between us and certain people, idols or people we hate, that make them seem different. Perhaps it's a protective mechanism so we don't face what we could be. Or, you know, yeah, in both ways, anyway. I shouldn't have left you. Yeah, you did leave her, though. I can tell. You have a good heart. But it does have a good heart, that is true. Oh, uh. Hi, my thing. That evolves. So it is basically an AI fused with Hextech. I really like that. Just got the Nobel Prize for that. Oh, what is Simon Dinger seeing? That one dude who ended all things that he witnessed once? Oh, fuck, man. This is gonna be bad. Put faith in my guidance. Hear me now. <laughs> Something to say about that is, though, that... Though I've said, I think, two episodes ago, that yes, you have to be fucking careful with new technology, you should also pursue it. Like, you shouldn't be done with it. Like... Try to take small steps. It's it's easy set. It is very hard to do. Like it's almost impossible to do even. And I'm not gonna sugarcoat it. Like this is just me sitting in a comfy chair here watching this without it mattering in real science currently. Uh, though I think shows like this matter a lot in life because you learn a lot from them and you think a lot. But um, the the thing is, you can't just disregard everything because you're afraid of it and you can't just accept everything because it's new you know you have to find a balance and what's the right balance point is this a different one in every every scenario that's why it's so dangerous and difficult and why science and ethics are so so difficult to combine because you just don't know because science is potential in a way as well it's not just this this using mathematics and formulas to just predict something like it is potential to change like magic a single seed and it looked 
also buy a seat. It's very lifelike. Victor, something's different. Oh, really? He changed? Did he get more uh, healthy? Must be destroyed. Wait, no. Would you do that? Would you do that? It's the Attack on Titan question, and if you haven't seen the Attack on Titan, I won't spoil you why. The Attack on Titan question, I would say, and I would just label it like that is if you could save your. Or, or let's t say it's the Last of Us question, even though I haven't really played that. My wife loves it, she just told me about it. But the, the, the Attack on Titan question, or the Last of Us question, if you had to kill everyone else to save the person you love most or hold dear the most or one of the most like that is like one of the things you think if they're gone i can't continue the way i'm now i will be completely fucking broken and dead inside in parts would you suffer humanity for that and with humanity i mean the people you don't know people that like pass you in the street that you don't give a shit about mostly i mean you can uh, be sondering i do think sondering is the term for Realizing that people you pass on the street are having lives as complex as you are, uh, you do. But let this beside the point. If you could save the person you love most, or one of the people you love most, and you have to end all the people you don't give a shit about, if you're real, would you do it? Would you stake one life against seven billion? If you don't know what those lives are? I actually would love to do research on that. Perhaps I will. Perhaps I will do that, but... It's just a question, what would you do? Tell me in the comments. Not because you want should drive the algorithm, though you should, but because I want to know. I will have it destroyed one way or another. Don't tell that to someone that's yeah. Nah, the council doesn't have it inside anymore. Actually Jace has quite some influence. I have to. I need to get ready. Awesome, he's like, yeah, save yourself, mate. What's Jace gonna do though? Is he gonna announce something again? Is she all right? <laughs> Come on, man. That's 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 Vi, right? Who is that? Do do I know him? Is that uh, what's his face? It was. I mean, I, I ordered old man my. Ah, oh, okay. It's not someone I should know. So simple to come by around here. That is true. Daughters and the uh, doctors and the <laughs> get her uh, hard to come by. Come with me. Just don't get her to Silka. Element. <laughs> it's awesome. Looks like Chetera. She's been stabbed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. Ailment? A coof. Uh, rash? She's just been stabbed. It's her ailment. <laughs> With this. Yeah, the mutations. Uh, Wanted to feel what it was like. What it was like? What, what? To make other people afraid. What? Why? Man, really looks like uh, Chatura from Hellraiser. She gives her a weapon. Is that worth a lot, though? Probably. Thank you. I really Just a business. Doesn't need things. She, she knew me when I was still. Is that her uh, friend M Migo or whatever he was called? Not the like stirred big one, but the other one. Might be. Okay. Oh. That's so sad, man. Rotten, dying, and the gutter, and still helping. Without witness, without reward, doing something good. Well, how has this threat gone unnoticed for so long? That is a good question, Z Jace. Oh, we'll settle that later. For now, we need to prevent any further attacks. At least Marcus got himself out of this castle for the for a while. This sort of an order. Do it. We have to protect the city. Jazz is also pretty riddled because his friend is fucking perishing, so yeah. Love that. 
Saw Caitlin Kiriman had a prisoner released on your order. Cover her. Is there anything I can assist with? Cover her. Fucking cover her. Don't give a shit. Cover her. No. Um, Fuck yeah! Fuck, it's what I should have done. I know it was wrong. But if someone is like, hey, your best friend or whatever released someone, and if I didn't know, I was, and I trusted the friend, I was like, yeah, I, I did that. <laughs> Oh man, man, this show is so good. It's so perfectly written. Holy fucking, fucking, fucking shit. Yeah, I'm really you're fucked. Everyone's turned against you because uh, what's her face? Did the politician lady that's so clever did. Yeah. Hmm. I believe if we set aside our greed and. Oh man, this episode. I'm so sorry this is going to be so long, but... I don't know. Like, I've thought about this so much. Because I do think I got it wrong for a lot of my life, but... There are these people, I don't know if you have these people in your lives. Doesn't, like... I don't mean, like, literally, like, you, you, you live with them, but you've seen them on TV or something. And you're like, you, you see these people and you're like, you have everything. You got handed everything. Why the fuck do you cry about whatever the fuck you're crying about? I don't give a shit. Like, do you know what life is? How hard it is? What I'm going through? And you sit there on your golden throne. You're, you're in your mansion on your yard. And you, you complain about your dog having like a coup. I'm just like making stuff up. Of course, I, I hope you get the gist. And... I am not a fan of relativism because I think it's stupid, but there is a bit of an of an idea of relativism here that you should consider, I think, even though I hate it, relativism in general. But how do you know what their life looks like, how they feel, like their perspective? What if the person on the yard is highly depressed? No one, no one likes them because everyone's just out for the money. They can trust no one. Every woman, let's say it's a man, or like it works the other way around as well. So just, let's just say it's a man, and every woman would just like uh, freak with them be and, and 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 be with them because they have money and not because they are a good person or they're a kind person or valuable person. Like in that. Uh, they they appreciate what they are. And for the women as well, like if you're a woman and the man just hit on you because like you're beautiful, you have power, you have money, uh, and not because you're a kind of soul, because you're a good soul, because you're clever, whatever, you know? And um, if you don't know what real hardship is, you cannot even gauge it. Like what are you gauging things against? The dog's having a coup. It might be the worst thing that happens to you, but you don't understand that it's not nothing. Like... I'm sorry, that it's nothing compared to you living in the gutter, having like one leg left, uh, dying of, I don't know, leukemia and like, you know, I did once, I do think it was one of the, I had more than like moments like these, but it was one moment I remember very vividly. I went to Paris on a trip with my, um, with some people from my from my grant uh, uh, agency, like where I got my my grant from my studies uh, in in my bachelor's years, so we went there and like we went to the museum, and the professor who uh, was with us, he was like an expert in Mesopotamian um, history, and he he we got a private um, guide tour through the Louvre with him, and he explained stuff that not even the people in Louvre could explain to us with the old. Mesopotamian text and that evening like I like you were like I was on this high like I was like wow I'm here with that person he tells me so much stuff I don't know people don't know it's not even in the textbooks in part because it's new he's translating the stuff he's translating stuff that's not translated yet like it was this this big awesome thing I felt and like it, I felt so high I felt like it, it, this is so good and then I went in the evening to a pub or something like that I went through the streets and next to one of the doors there was a mother in in rags nursing her like just born child freezing in the fucking cold with three degrees celsius trying to get through trying to 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 fucking survive and i do think that it was one of the biggest mood whiplashes or or like whiplashes i've had like this this one thing i had where i was like this is like the 
I'm exaggerating. This is like the, the pinnacle of humanity, and this is the most terrible thing of humanity, and just saw that in one day. And, you know, that is, that is the thing. And, yes, you think people like, like Heimerdinger says, they're greedy, they're arrogant, they're vain, they're stupid, they don't know what, what, what to measure against, but it's not really their fault, though you can fault them for it. I do think you can, in part. But, you know, it's, it's so interesting. And I, I know, I'm sorry, it was attention there, but just... Again. We'll take vigilance. We must hold each other accountable. That is true, though. Accountability is very important. Oh, Jesus, fuck. In the undercity attacks at the hex gates and in the... Oh, interesting. Jace, you forgot. I'm sorry, I don't know what Heimerding is doing here. I thought he was the, the, the chief of the academy, not the chief of security. But yeah, he must feel betrayed now, holy shit. But I get Jace, he wants to save his friend. This city will take more than just speeches. Yeah, that's true though. What not to do? Oh god, fuck man. God, this episode. <laughs> that's basically, he is accusing him of being a politician. Because that's what politicians do, all of them, everyone. Every single one. If you think there's a politician that doesn't do it, he's just very, or she is just more skilled in it, or is from a party that has the advantage of not fucking up your country for like 20 years. So, politicians tell you what you want to hear. And uh, always, everyone. And they will not solve anything most of the time. They will just work into their own uh, pockets. That's just how it is. They get money, it's easy, from lobbyism or whatever the fuck. So, yeah. That's the thing. So, yeah. But let me ask you this. So, so he does, and, and that's the speech part. They give speeches. But a speech has to have meaning. A speech without action following is a worthless speech. Because actions are more important than words, always. One of the... I often say to every rule there's an exception, but I do think this one, there's, it's hard to find exceptions to this rule. But I do think that, and I do think one of the rules is actions speak more than words all the time. And if you find a counter to that rule, I would be very interested, really, really sincerely interested, because I can't think of one, so I might be stuck in this rule. I might not see its badness, the, the bad part of it. But I do think you can talk all the shit you want if you don't act. Fuck you. That's what most politicians do. So, yeah, it's calling them out here. Yeah, how do you fix it? How do you fix it, Heimerdinger? Your Hextech projects need more time, more safety. I love that he immediately knows. We can't wait for progress. Oh. Focused on the future, not the past. Wow, this is so dense. This is so, so dense. First of all, love the time I think apparently lives for more than 100 years. I do think we had that established before. I do think I remember that. So it's the doctor problem. Doctor Who, I mean. So like if you live forever and your loved ones, the ones you care about die and perish, your frame of reference is so different. Like you don't understand that anymore one day. You have to you have to make sure you still stay in the present in their little fleeting moments of life that flicker and fade away. And if you don't, they will accuse you of this. They will accuse you of, you've got all the time in the world, so to speak. I don't. So fuck your opinion. Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's so interesting. And also the living in the past... The the theme of the teacher in stories is obviously, I, I, you probably know, so I will repeat this, but I still want to make sure, if you don't know, you know. The, the theme of the teacher in stories, the old teachers always, not always, most of the time one of encapsulation of the past, the tradition that is there, that you should inherit, so you don't stand there with your pants down without anything to back up what you think, so you don't just follow through with your stupid, naive, youthful opinions that are rubbish most of the time, so you can have them and measure them against something that was there before. But it's also very rigid 
and there might be new problems that it can't adapt to the teacher. And that's where most teachers, uh, teachers and stories die, because most stories deal with new stuff, like novel, unknown experiences bleeding into the lives of characters, and the old teacher can't, can't face them down because they cannot adapt anymore. That's a very meta perspective of, of thinking about it, but I do think it's pretty valuable. And your years of service can never be repaid. I like that he honors him, but yeah. Time we gave the beloved founder of our city. Oh. Holy shit, that's, yeah. Don't do this. That's true, though. That's true. Normally, in every other show, I would have been like, don't do that, that's stupid, but Heimerding has really stuck in the past here. Though Jace is too stuck in the future. I think they should have talked this out more, but that's hot. It's hot because they like at least Jay's is charged by emotion so much so. And they're all confused. Let the past die. Be a Ryan Johnson. It has to be unanimous. All in favor. Holy shit, man. He's got them all under spell now. She's I love that she is hesitating even though she gave him the power. Always. So good. Holy fuck man. Is she manipulated by him here? Yeah? So now it's Council of Seven again. Wow, man. I love that he's the last to raise his hand and he's still shivering even though he initiated it. Man, Heimerdinger, I'm so sad for you. Who is the missing seat? Oh, no, it's Heimerdinger's seat, I'm sorry. Awesome. I can understand it, but it's not the clever, most clever thing. But they couldn't have done it any different because the characters are written to perfection. No oh god, that that startled me. So she got the fucking liquid from Silco now. I love that they have a thing here, it's teased it, but I really ship them. Why? Just ask her what the fuck got on. Now, Silco will be watching. Oh I also like her hairstyle. Kate's hairstyle is really cool. Violet Riddell? He used to live here. Oh, yeah. Who's Powder? I thought she died, but no. She did, though. She did. Depends on how you... how you take this statement, of course, but she did die. From a psychological perspective, she died was reborn and what really happened powder powder died and that she regressed so the the powder that, that was a bit mature died um but there is of course always a problem between a literal and a metaphorical interpretation of things and people Confuse them, have hard times distinguishing them sometimes, and I mean that's a problem in many things, especially religion. But I'm not gonna go there now. Creed Cell, what? You don't have parents. You don't have parents now. They were killed by enforcers. By enforcers and Silco, though. Ah, and now she knows why she hates her. It's so fucking good, and she's right to. She's precautious. Don't trust the thing that killed your parents first. Like, may it prove itself. Ooh, Silco's there. So let's see. Let's see what's gonna happen now. Uh, so he keeps him alive with that shit. I like that. It's the reverse of the Marco effect from Attack on Titan. He's gonna talk to her. You know what I love about this? Normally if the villain talks to the hero and i know these are not villains and heroes it's a proctor let's let's rephrase that i want to be more fair because this show deserves all the fairness and more i can muster the antagonist is talking to the protagonist and the antagonist normally just gives bullshit and the protagonist is to contend with it but here the antagonist is probably speaking a truth now from a perspective which is a lot stronger than empty words that they normally spout oh it's him um, who's it Mister. He has in a way, though. Oh, 
she is more than I ever imagined. What does he really feel about Jinx, though? Find her and erase whatever fucked up delusions you. The problem is they are not delusions. What are you gonna do about that? What drove your sister away? And it's why I'm here right now. She doesn't know her limits. That is true, though. Vias to I love it. Normally in these times, <laughs> if you know what I mean, female characters tend to be full of themselves and it's um, supported by everything else of the story. The story's bent around that, so it is true. She is just doing the same. She's gonna she's getting fricked from all sides by that, and I love that. It's so refreshing. Yeah, so well, a weakness that did these things in part, in part, in part. You talk too much. I'm just gonna freak up these things. I also love that Caitlin knows engineering and brings down the eye of truth. Very symbolic. The symbolism is just so heavy. I probably missed a thousand things already, I feel. Bringing down the eye that sees everything, the truth. Silco? She is looking at herself in the mirror. I do think in the like in the pond. Wherever you are, light it up and I'll Oh wow, she wants her sister now. Oh my god. Oh <laughs> god. That's so fucking sad. Oh my fucking god. Oh wow. Because she knows she's wrong, she needs a sister. The only thing that ever held her on the course that's somehow good in a way. Holy shit, who's that? Is that the dead fr Yeah, it's the dead friends. Okay. Uh, dead friends calling for Vi to make it right. Wow. Holy shit. Holy shit, who did kill Zilko just kill? What? Who did he kill? Was it the 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 Milo thing a guy? I'm sorry, I have to rewatch. Yeah, there's Milo and the other dude. Who is that? Oh my god, I'm so sorry. I don't know who that is. Who's he killing here? Or throwing away? Is it just one of his mooks? I know he's fucking pissed because they couldn't detain her. Wow, he just kills him with his kicks. Wow. Who did he kill? I'm so sorry, tell me who he killed, please. That's so, uh, like, he's going fucking over because he failed. I is broken and his power is broken a bit as well. And the goals are shady again. Why are they arresting him? And bridge again. I'm sorry, I have to rewatch that again. I will probably cut it out for the YouTube people, Patreon, you will see this. Oh, wait, is uh, Jinx on top of the die? Yeah, no, I don't think she's at another place. So I don't think he just was kicking the shit out of his mooks. And he's just mad that he lost all the super soldiers or something. But please con confirm that on Patreon, if you can, because I do think I missed something here. I know they escape, and he's fucked because the police are not coming at him, I do think. And Jinx obviously is regretting her past and the people she killed by her childish naivety. Yeah, I do think she's. Uh, I do think he's just killing all the people he put the serum on. Enraged. I do think he wanted to capture her though and talk more to her, and she didn't let him. Very interesting. 
Yeah, the bridge. Yeah, okay. So the bridge is barricaded again now. So the uh, I do think it's the it's the bridge between uh, the slums and the higher society. I mean, we know that from episode one already, but I just want to make clear. I understand that if I did not correct me as well. Okay. Okay. Oh, is Victor gonna find them? No. Okay. Oh no, it's little Victor. What happened in the past? Yeah, so Silco is indeed pimping that weird thing. The the dragon thing. The Komodo Warren. So survival at the cost of something pure might be worth it sometimes or might not be. Oh, there Rio is in the present. Oh, so it's not Silco, it's someone else. Okay, I'm, I'm sorry, I was wrong. But I mean, I, they cleared it up, I, I guess. But who was that? Was that uh, Silco's dude? The other doctor? Up. Oh, God. What's that? Is that her arm? Yeah. Oh, Jinx fucked her up. Oh, God. Is Vi gonna come? Or is she not? That might send Jinx into a fucking frenzy, though. It's her only hope. Her only light. Powder? Oh, thank fuck, she's there. Wow, that's so awesome. But she's changed too much. She's not powered anymore. Hence the episode title. Why? Oh. Will that help her? Wow, she drops it. Yeah, she doesn't give a shit about it anymore. Because all she wanted was the truth, Emily. She thought Silico was it, but... Back, I promise I did, but I... And she did. I, it doesn't matter. I just... I never thought I oh, that's so sweet. <laughs> oh, wow, that's so sad as well. Yes, of course, it's me. <laughs> but Caitlin's gonna come and she thinks she's gonna run her up. I hope not. Oh, God, I hope not. I changed. She did, though. She changed. Oh, I know. You did what you had to do to survive. That is true, though, probably. And Silco fucking guess letter like a thousand guess things. Yeah, this is gonna be a problem. Who's she? Who are you? Oh god, fuck it. An enforcer? <laughs> okay, so we got one of the problems. It is natural though, I like it. It's naturally set up. But, man, she should have just told Kate, yeah, stay the fuck out of this. And then Kate should have gone in anywhere. I would have loved that even a bit more, but that's criticism on a very, very, very high level. Caitlin, Whatever. Listen, we can work this out. Yeah, Jinx, your vice fucked. Yeah. Oh, God, her dead friends are with her now. The, the guild is there. It's Jinx now. Powder. Fell down a well. She did though, when she died. Stop talking to me like I'm a child! Who is that like? Yeah, you should have never called her a fucking jinx. And no one can fault you for doing it, which is the brilliant thing. Like if, like I don't know, because I've never lived through something like that, but I do think if you've got an annoying little brat as a sister, um, and you call her that teasingly, like, that's just a game, but what if the game becomes reality because they don't understand? Or it's not as funny as you thought. We had a, we had a guy in my class once, he was a, I, I liked him a lot, and he had a nickname. Everyone called him that, and even the teachers did. After, like, he asked them sometimes that in the last year of school, he was like, I hate that fucking name, call me by my real name. And everyone was like, okay, what? And I realized he never wanted it, he just played along because of peer pressure. Even if people you give nicknames to like them, be aware they might not, and they just want to please you or the other people and not stand out. So, 
Yeah, but she did call her that. Did the scar and everything piles up now. For this stupid stone. <laughs> oh, she didn't even know the stone. Yeah, but Caitlin does. I'm here for you. Only you. Oh, she's true though. Anywhere. I'm not going to abandon you again. Um. Uh, wow. Did you hear that? It's the ravens cross again, yeah? Oh god, what's gonna happen? She's so fucking mad and it's so well done. Oh, it's the weird fire lit things. Oh god. Where are they coming from though? Where are they coming from now? They look like fireflies a bit. That's awesome. I like that they fight together again, so Jinx should understand. Because actions carry more weight than words. So even if Jinx might mistrust her words, she now sees her actions do things. Coming back to the point I was making, but yeah. Holy fuck, what was that? That looked awesome. I love the little gadget things. Oh no, what is that thing gonna do? Yeah, Kate is gonna go for it though. Man, this composition of shots and the lightning effects are so fucking awesome against the darkness. Like, I love lasers in the dark, it's beautiful. Blue and red and yellow lasers in the dark and pink as well. Like, you fucking love it. Fucking love it. Stupid crow man. Oh, they're also dressed as crows as well. I wonder why. Wow, that was so fucking awesome how she evaded that. She's gonna clown on them now. But I should have her a fucking fist though. Oh no. It's not powered anymore. Powder's dead. Powder regressed into Jinx. <laughs> oh shit, man. Yeah. Oh shit, man. Yeah, kick him in the face. Also, this means that Vi can't protect her anymore because she lived, lived longer than Vi, so to speak. That's the problem now. I like that, though. I hope that's the problem now. Her sister can't protect her anymore. Oh, wow. Just learn now. The sister she wanted to protect her couldn't protect her. Holy shit, this is so awesome. This is so awesome. What the fuck? You so hard for your fucking cliffhanger bullshit, man. Fuck you. Oh, fuck, man. I can't watch another one. I can't. Oh, shit, man. This show is so awesome. It's so awesome. Yeah. I'm really sorry I didn't understand that action sequence with Silco. I I just have the feeling I missed so much. Like the 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 least it could have been was like he was fucking mad at his dudes for not getting her because like he talked her, tried to talk her and entice her and they fucked it up by not getting her. That's like what I at least got from it. But he kicked the shit out of that one dude and I don't know if he was important. The thing is, if, if I see people very clearly, the models look striking. I assume they are someone I should have known. But I do think in this show it might have been that they're just all the models are well designed. So I, I really don't know. I'm very sorry. Um, but other than that, um, some confusion that doesn't matter in this, for the story at all. I really like that. Really like that. The ending was fun as well. Very well done. And now Jinx has another problem. All she wanted was her sister to save her. She, her sister came and couldn't save her. Man, awesome setup. All of this is just really, really awesome. And I guess Victor now wants artificial augmentation and he knows it will fuck him up, but he doesn't care because he doesn't want to die. And who does? Anyway, anyway, I'm sorry for... This was very long. I'm sorry for the rambling. And 
I do hope you liked it. If you're still here, leave a like and subscribe if you're not that far, like if you're still here. <laughs> but uh, yeah, this is this show is got here already. It's so, so got here. Love it. Thanks for being here. Take care of yourself as always. Please take care of yourself and uh, see you around. Bye.